Hey guys and welcome back to another video. My name is April. If this is your first time here, I am a skincare slash cosmetic chemist. Um, I talk about all things skincare, all things beauty. We dabble in nutrition and fitness here and there, but majorly this channel is all about skincare and beauty. Today, as you guys can tell from the title, uh, the topic is pretty apparent. We're going to be talking about Diva Curl. A subscriber reached out to me to uh, talk about this candle and I majorly do skincare so I'm sure you guys are wondering what does she know about hair? Um, not gonna lie, I'm not 100% versed in hair um, but I, you know, at my job we do make conditioners and shampoos and not that many hair products but a few hair products so I figured I did have some knowledge about it and I did research about this uh, scandal. It's pretty much a scandal at this point um, and I figured I should, you know, give you guys my perspective on it. has literally been everywhere. I didn't realize how much of a big deal it was and it's just crazy that you know this has gone just to this point where people are creating Facebook groups and women are you know saying they're gonna destroy their name at this point really. Um, so it's kind of crazy but I do want to give you guys a backstory on this company and then from there you guys will sort of have an idea of what's going on. So Diva Curl is a hair company. Their brand is pretty much built around the fact that they are pretty much anti-shampoo, surfactants, shampoo products. You guys know I've talked about surfactants on this channel. Surfactants pretty much reduce the surface tension between two liquids or between a liquid and gas and essentially they uh, have foaming properties and they are using detergents bubble baths, uh, really anything cleansing, a whole lot of products. So this company, Diva Curl, has pretty much decided that surfactants are something that they are against, uh, which considerably, yes, uh, surfactants to some degree can make the hair brittle. If overused, obviously, uh, start to break down, if you will. So this company has created products that have little to no surfactants. I believe they have the low poo, have a non-poo cleanser and a low poo cleanser. So pretty much these products have very little surfactants. I believe the low poo one is one that has very little surfactants. And we'll get into that in a second. But I just want to talk about everything that has pretty much been going on with this company so far. So a lot of women are saying that their hair is falling out, their scalps are inflamed, they're experiencing bald spots in their hair. Also a lot of people are reporting uh, loss in curl definition in their hair. And this company caters to curly hair girls like myself and you know every grade of curly hair. So that's Something that I personally take seriously because oh, you guys know the struggle to grow curly hair and maintain it. So if this product is causing this much damage, it's of a concern personally to me because I have curly hair. Um, and also a lot of people are complaining about dandruff in their hair. And like I said earlier, there has been Facebook groups that have been created that are wanting to start a petition to sue this company. But obviously this company is backed up by a lot of lawyers and I'm sure there's like a whole process for that to go through to uh, have a lawsuit happen. But anyways, um, the company does insist that um, their products are safe to use. There's no damage to them. They have a whole statement that they've put out that their companies are tested with quality assurance, you know, microbiology testing, stability testing, you know, all the testings that are pretty much done to ensure that the product is safe to be marketed and used. They have been around for a couple of years, a few years actually, um, and their products are not inexpensive. They're pretty, uh, expensive so i can understand the hurt that this woman is feeling they're probably feeling like they invested in this product and it's not coming through or damaging their hair so i get where the consumers are coming from but this company is standing to their statement and saying that their products have been tested and tried and they are safe and good to use so that's what they're saying um before we go deeper into the video i'm going to insert this video of the hair structure and the hair follicle and how our hair grows so you guys have an idea about the hair anatomy and you guys can sort of have a bit of a deeper understanding about everything I'm going to talk about pretty soon. Hair we can see is a dead protein called keratin. Keratin is colorless and arranged in overlapping scales which makes hair flexible. 
The hair cortex contains pigment that gives hair its color. Hair with abundant pigment is black, less is brown or red, and no pigment, white. Hair grows about six inches a year from the living root. Balding results from reduced hormone levels in both men and women. Each follicle has a small muscle that raises and lowers the hair, trapping warm air in winter and blocking out the sun in summer. Hair glands produce an oily lubricant called sebum that keeps hair from drying out. A yeast eats sebum, irritating the scalp causing cells to die. Dead cells appear white and are called dandruff. So now that you guys have seen that video, I'm sure you guys now have a bit of an understanding about the hair and its anatomy. With that said, I'm going to talk about some things that could be wrong with this company and why people might be experiencing what they're experiencing. So the point of surfactants being used in shampoos is for it to sort of lift up all the oil, all the grime that's in our hair and, you know, sort of wash it out. Because if that's not done, there's a certain yeast that grows in the scalp called malassezia. And this yeast, uh, if not washed off by some sort of surfactants, over time, it starts to cause flaking of the hair, can start to cause all these things that this woman experiencing, you know, like dandruffs and inflammation and bald spots. So it's important to have some type of surfactants in your shampoo. I noticed just from reading the articles that a lot of the people that were using the low poo cleansers were experiencing um, as much problems as people that were just using their co-wash products which are just 100% conditioners. Conditioners are used to strip off all the surfactants that might be, it might be left in the hair that could essentially cause damage if left in the hair and uh, help to restore the normal flora of the hair but the oil and the grime if not washed away it just sort of creates like a almost like a, a blanket over the the oil and grime and over time it starts to cause your hair to become brittle and start to fall off. I did notice, I mean, there's so many things that could be causing the symptoms that this woman is finding in their hair. I noticed they ha do have fragrance in their products. A lot of their products have peppermint, grapeseed oil, um, star fruit and mango fragrance and fragrance. You guys already know if you watch my videos that I am not the biggest fan of fragrance. Fragrance contains over a hundred uh, functional groups that could cause damage. Fragrance is something that I try to stay away from and especially not something I would want to put on my hair just because you don't really know what you you might be allergic to because it has so many compounds in there it could be causing your hair to break off really so uh, fragrance is something that I don't uh, entertain in products I'm not a fan and this almost all their products have fragrance another thing I noticed is with their low pool cleansers uh, the low pool cleansers has something called cocamide propyl betaine Glucamide propylbutane is a surfactant, is a mild surfactant. It's found in synthetic detergents, found naturally um, made from coconuts. But I also noticed their website doesn't show all of the ingredients that are used in their products. So I couldn't really tell, you know, the rest of the ingredients because sometimes when ingredients interact with each other, it could be a synergetic relationship, but it could also be unsynergetic one. So it's possible that these products are maybe interacting with this uh, surfactant and uh, sort of just not working together. Some side effects of cocamide propyl betaine uh, is it can cause your skin to get irritated. It can cause rashes. It also cause burning and itching. This is rare, but it does happen especially if you're you know solely using this as a wash in your hair and you're leaving it on your hair and you're not really washing it out these are side effects of this ingredient so it's important to just know that it doesn't mean that this is solely causing the problems that you're seeing but everyone is different and this might be the cause of some people's uh, damage that they're noticing in conclusion honestly i don't want to drag this video too long just know that this company obviously has been around for a long time they are testing their products it's possible that their products are fine but also if you're only just advertising co-washing of the hair you're not encouraging your customers to get the grime and oil in their hair and you guys know just over time your hair just tends to trap so much oil and grime and it's important to wash it off with some sort of surfactants so i'm sure even if you weren't using diva curl products if you're using just a co-wash all day every day just throughout the year you might still experience these symptoms. So it might not be Diva Curl, but it's important to know that there's also a ingredient like Cucamida Propyl that could be causing it, but it also just could be the fact that you're just co-washing your hair, which the company is known for. That's it, you guys. Just make sure that you're washing your hair with some type of surfactants. Um, make sure you're not using harsh surfactants like 
uh, sodium lauryl sulfate, use like a milder surfactant, maybe like a amphoteric surfactant. I'll insert my video about surfactants in the description box below so you guys have an idea of how surfactants work and all that stuff. It's a really good video, you should definitely check it out. Um, you definitely learn about surfactants and you know, the type of surfactants that are used in conditioners and are pretty much safe to use in the hair. This is not a bashing video to give a curl. Like I said, it could be give a curl, it could be just the fact that they're, you're only co-washing your hair, which is not advised in any way. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Thumbs up this video if you like it. It really helps my channel out. Um, yeah, leave a comment down below. Thank you to the subscriber that left suggestions for this video. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely giving me a different take and letting me uh, learn new things, especially about hair. Make sure you subscribe and thumbs up this video if you like it. If you have any suggestions for me to do, I love getting suggestions. I'm thinking about doing like a series and like brands like Ordinary. I noticed that people are really interested in that too. Definitely leave me a suggestion down below and I will uh, get into it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.